The 1982-83 Lakers were Western Conference champions. They scored 10 three-pointers. All season. It was kind of a rough start for the NBA three-pointer. It was introduced in 1979, and three-point attempts actually went down the next year. It took almost an entire decade for teams to even average two threes a game. But they did, and in the 90s, teams were really starting to get with the program. And then they repainted the court. See, there was considerably more scoring in the NBA then than there is today. Teams averaged 110 points a game, in large part because of the league's three biggest stars, Michael Jordan, Magic Johnson, and Larry Bird. During one three-year stretch, these three guys, just three dudes, were responsible for 3.3% of all NBA scoring. And then they retired, and then in the 93-94 season, scoring cratered league-wide. So, as what I would call an indirect response to Magic Bird and MJ retiring, the NBA shortened the three-point arc just a little bit, and that's why three-point scoring exploded. After a few years, they brought the three-point line back to where it used to be, and the explosion ended, but three-pointers remained on the rise. Around 2010, they actually plateaued for a little while, and now they're spiking again. When the three was introduced, teams didn't even sink one per game. Now they hit almost nine a game. Last season, Steph Curry hit an average of five per game all by himself. Thanks to guys like him, basketball is completely horrible and everything is ruined forever. So let's go back and fix it. Shots from up close are easy. Shots from far away are hard. You should never attempt anything that is hard, so why do so many players shoot from out there? Well, the first reason is obviously the three-point arc, which isn't even at a uniform distance. See, it tapers off here at the corners because the court isn't wide enough to fit the full arc because basketball was not designed for this. It is a totally arbitrary reward system. It's as weird as any other zoning law, and just like a zoning law, it determines where people end up doing their business. Look at how polarized shooting has become. The NBA is shooting either from right under the rim or way out here, with not a lot of in-between. It's been this way for a while now, and yet in some ways the defense hasn't quite seemed to answer. So before I show you this, I want to acknowledge that defense can't be reduced to just blocks. Not even close. Defense is a very sophisticated thing, but blocks are a stat we've got, and they're at least a signifier of good, tough, close defense. There are plenty of blocks up here, but where are all the blocks back here? Where are y'all at? This little scrap of evidence supports what we all kind of know, that defense out of the perimeter is just not as tough. And I figure that's a big reason behind this craziness. Look at the shooting percentage from each distance last season. Right under the shadow of the basket, the percentages are very high, which is what you'd expect. Then they drop off to 40%, and they stay there. You have to get deep into three-point territory before we see literally any kind of downward trend. Which is weird! I mean, look at this. NBA players shot 384 from three feet out last season. From 22 feet out, they shot 388. Now, of course, there are reasons for that, but on its face, this is so strange. And that brings us here. That giant red chunk of the court is no man's land. More than half the shots in the NBA last season were taken either in a tiny circle near the rim or in a two-foot wide stripe 23 feet away. So, how do you feel about this? Is this okay? See, I'm asking you because I don't know. Uh, I don't really have that many sports opinions. I just like to take sports however they come. So I'm just going to seal your opinions instead. I asked about 600 basketball fans how they felt about the three-pointer. Almost all of you like it. Some of you don't care. Some of you don't like it at all. And a few of you answered, I really wish the three-point shot did not exist. Some of you were kind enough to explain. They're bad, says the Bofa man. They suck, says they call me John B. Angie says, because my team that I like is worse than them than other teams and they would do better if they didn't exist. Oh hey, Angie's a Bucks fan. So we can absolutely do that, right? The NCAA does it all the time. During one six year period, they vacated almost 2% of their wins. I mean, that's a big chunk of wins and they just rewrote history as though the wins never happened. If they can do that, we can go rescore the entire 2015-16 NBA season without the three point line. Should we really do this? Y'all, that is gonna be so much work for me. Oh, no. Okay, okay. Here's what we're doing. This is not a what-if scenario. This is a we've decided that all these three-pointers are invalid scenario. The three-point line is as artificial as any other rule, and as such, we can take it away after the fact. 
Also, just because we're doing this doesn't mean the shots didn't happen. So if Steph Curry shoots from 25 feet out, it still counts. It just counts as a two-pointer instead of a three-pointer. So I rescored this team by team. To start, I looked up all 82 of a team's games. I subtracted one point for every three they made. Then I did the same for their opponent. Then I rescored the game. If a losing team ends up with more points, their result changes from a loss to a win, and vice versa. But that's not good enough. What about three-shot fouls that were assessed because a guy was fouled behind the three-point line? Well, I decided to hunt for every third foul shot and disallow it, and that resulted in 597 made free throws taken off the board. But that's still not good enough. What about all the games that went to overtime but shouldn't have because the only reason the teams were tied at the end of regulation was because one shot more threes than the other? That led to a couple dozen more wins that turned into losses, and of course, vice versa. It turns out that rewriting history is pretty hard. It took me a long time, but I did it because I'm bored and because I love you. Clearly, a few things changed, but before we talk about them, I need to tell you something. See, if these results were 100% accurate, I would have obviously had the same number of wins as losses. I didn't. They're just barely off. I double-checked and I triple-checked, and I still ended up with seven games somewhere and a stack of 1,230 that had the wrong result. So these results, while highly accurate, are not perfectly accurate. So first, let's look at the Eastern Conference. The Raptors actually took the top seed from the Cavs, who slipped from 57 wins to 51. By the way, we have a ties column now, because a lot of games ended up tied at the end of regulation. Obviously, no overtime was played, so a tie is all we've got. Anyway, the Pistons fell hard, and the Hornets fell super hard. Both lost a playoff spot, and the Bulls and Wizards snuck in. On to the West. The Grizzlies are now a 50-win team, and in the feel-good story of the spreadsheet, the Timberwolves, who originally had only 29 wins, are now in the playoffs. The Jazz snuck in too, and the Mavs and Rockets were bounced out. And yes, if you're a Warriors hater, then you're getting what you want. The Warriors fall from 73 games to 59, and the Spurs get the top seed. But hold on though, because from a certain perspective, these results are almost kind of a credit to the Warriors. You would think that generally speaking, teams that took fewer threes would benefit from the no threes experiment and win more games, right? That's kind of sort of generally true, and it's fun to look at the two outliers who don't follow that rule at all. And the first one is Golden State. Take away their beloved three-point arc, and they're still one of the best teams in the NBA. The inverse is Brooklyn. The Nets don't take many threes, but it doesn't matter. Rewrite the rules in their favor and they're like a statue. They just still suck just as bad. So obviously, by our rules, some of the wrong teams made the playoffs in real life. But I did go ahead and rescore every playoff series without the three-point line and almost nothing changed. The East ended up exactly the same. Out in the West, there was one tied series. A game flipped, a 4-2 win flipped to a 3-3 tie. What can you do? At any rate, the Warriors won the next round. Warriors Thunder, however, that did change. You probably remember the Warriors' dramatic comeback from a 3-1 deficit to win the series. Well, in Game 6, the Warriors depended on threes, and the Thunder only depended on three. That flipped a 108-101 Warriors win to a 98-86 Thunder win, which made Game 7 unnecessary and gave OKC the series. In the real world, the Warriors met the Cavs in the finals. And in the real world, just like in our world, they lost and the Cavs are champions. So, to recap, of the 15 playoff series last season, 13 ended the same way with or without the three. One series was different and one was left undetermined. So what all this is telling me is that the three-point line isn't really good or bad, it's just kind of there. Sure, there are a lot of people who don't like watching games full of threes, and that's cool, but the success rate from out there only drops 1 or 2 percent. Now, there's no way to really know, but my wild guess is that if the three-point line was taken away, defenses would relax even more than usual at the perimeter, and that might bump that tiny drop in accuracy back up. So you'd probably be watching a similar brand of basketball. You'd just be watching 23-foot twos instead of 23-foot threes because guys would still shoot from out there. Their odds of hitting would be pretty much just as good. So, if three range shots are still worth taking when they're only worth two points, and the season mostly ended up the same without the three, then I figure the three-point line barely matters. If it disappeared, I don't think the league would be any different. I think basically the same teams would win, and I think the players would pretty much play the same way. Which is not to say that the three isn't really neat. It is. I mean, I think it is. And what Steph Curry accomplished last season was fascinating. Just one more thing. So I have 3,695 stars to show you. 
Each one represents the time a player attempted at least 100 threes in a season. The further up a star is, the more threes a player attempted. The further right a star is, the better the shooting percentage. So up and right is good. For example, Steve Kerr, he was great. He should have shot more. Tony Roden was not great. He should have shot way less. I mean, here we've got a lot of volume shooters, some good shooters, some bad shooters. Kyle Korver was great. Jason Williams was really not. Uh, 1991 Michael Adams, you gotta quit it. And there's Steph. Proud owner of several of the best three-point seasons ever. Wait, where's his last season? Did I miss it? No. There it is. Oh.